Did you know that in the United States Supreme Court, there's a statue of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and they actually call him one of the greatest lawmakers in history? Disclaimer, I'm aware of the laws in Islam against making statues and drawing the face of the Prophet, peace be upon them all. So I've covered their faces in this video. You see, historically, many of the founding fathers of the US and its institutions have recognized Islam as one of the greatest justice systems in the world. To give you some context, Morocco was actually the first ally the US ever had and Thomas Jefferson actually had the first iftar ever done in the White House on December 9th, 1805. He had invited some Tunisian diplomats for a meeting and because it was Ramadan, they actually ordered the meal to come out at precisely sunset so that they could break their fast. But what's interesting is that Thomas Jefferson actually made the decision by himself because he had actually studied Islam and Arabic in college. In another example, John Adams was also famously a founding father who owned and read the Quran. In fact, because of the importance of the Ottoman Empire at the time, and because of the US's ties with North African Muslim countries, many of the founding fathers and important politicians in the US actually either read the Quran or had studied some Islamic law in history. History. And because of this, if you ever visit Washington, you'll actually find a lot of murals and statues honoring Islam. For example, in the Supreme Court, as I mentioned earlier, there's a statue of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. They also have statues of Moses and Solomon, by the way, peace be upon them all. In the US Capitol building, they have a portrait of Sultan Suleiman al-Qanuni. He was famous for revolutionizing the legal system in the Ottoman Empire. And then if you go to the Library of Congress and you look up at the ceiling, you can actually find the word Islam written with physics underneath it. This is in celebration of the advancement of science under the Islamic Golden Age. And then of course, if you go to the library of Thomas Jefferson, you can find his personal translation of the Quran there. Oh, and one more thing, but it's not in Washington, but I did want to mention it. If you ever visit the Harvard Law School, you can see an ayat of the Quran written on one of the walls near the entrance. It's ayat number 135 of Surat Nisa. Pause the video here if you want to read it. Who would have thought that you could find so many Islamic Easter eggs in America's historic institutions? And those are just the ones that I know about. Let me know in the comments if you know of any others that I missed. Like a follow for more Muslim facts.